Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for tuning in and stopping by to the Diva Speaks Relationships Ministry Show. My name is Angela Potarell. I am your relationship concierge, and my show is strictly about relationship issues, whether they are engagements, committed relationships, or marriages. So I just wanted to give that disclosure going into the show. And I'm super excited to have you here with me today. Yes, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I, I don't know about you, I shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad to be here with you guys. Yes, I know that some of you have been watching um, my episodes, but this is, this is fresh content. I did have some production issues. So my apologies for just now coming on camera to give you a fresh word a fresh, um, you know, a fresh um, set of content, but I'm super excited to be here today. I, I give thanks to God and all things. So um, if you haven't had an opportunity, if I am new to you, make sure that you go and follow, like and follow my social media pages because I do daily interaction on social media and I do go live weekly on my TikTok. Um, and I'm about to give you a dose of what I do on a weekly basis over there. But of course, it's going to be from a biblical standpoint. But just to let you know, on my social media platforms, um, basically, um, first and foremost on TikTok, I do get letters. I get letters from people all across that are in search of answers for whatever they are going through in their marriages and or relationships. And what I do is I read the letter and then I talk to the individuals before an audience and give my perspective, my advice, my opinion. And, um, you know, I tell it how it really is. Sometimes you need uh, to have a heart to heart with some people so that you can make a connection. And hopefully that will be the encouragement that they need um, to build up the courage to do the right thing. And that will lead them, you know, back to restoration in their relationships. And again, if you're new, my platform, my ministry is all about relationships, matters of the heart, marriages, restoration, reconciliation, rebuilding, and standing on the word of God when it comes to your covenants, because you have to have been living under a rock to not know that the enemy is busy in this season and he is attacking our homes, our families, our relationships, and primarily the marriages. The enemy is on top of his game. He is on assignment, his assignment. And he has, you know, his goal is to steal, kill, and destroy. And if you are too preoccupied with life, if you are too self-absorbed, if you have a million things going on in your life that are occupying your time, that you're not paying attention to the attacks of the enemy, before you know it, you'll turn around and things will be in shambles and it will be hard to steer that thing back on course. But I come with hope to disperse and dispense to you, hope and letting you know that your situation you know what? All is not lost. Okay. Through Christ Jesus, Matthew 19, 26 tells us all things are possible. So this is where you will find the encouragement and the backing that you need in your time or in your season of distress or struggle. But getting back to the social media and why it's so important to connect with me over there, I do the live shows and I have the letters. So what I've done is I brought the letters that approach a, you know, pose the question from a biblical standpoint over here to this platform. So I'm going to read a letter that I got from a young wife and I am going to provide feedback on what she is experiencing. So that is what you have to look forward to today. Um, just to run through, you can find me on TikTok, uh, Facebook, and Instagram, and YouTube, and the Diva Speaks Relationships um, Roku channel as well, okay? So don't forget that you can find me all over the place. I want to connect with you wherever I am and you are. If we are there, occupy 
occupying the same space, let's connect, okay? Let's connect and let's fellowship and let's be the source of encouragement that this sad world um, has, okay? Because there are many people out there, it's just so sad, guys. People out there left and right celebrating and just getting divorced for all frivolous types of reason. I mean, they canceling their marriages, 20 and 30 year marriages because they want to be, it's just a mess. And it is not in alignment with the word of God, you know? And so I come to be a, a beacon of light in a very, very dark, dark world that subscribes to this cancel culture. They want to walk out on relationships and walk out on marriages and not take responsibility for the role that they are playing in the breakdown or the demise of their relationships. Okay, that is not of God. That is not of God. They want grace, but they're not willing to give grace, nor are they willing to forgive, but they want to be forgiven. And you know, that is all out of alignment with God's will and purpose for our life as a whole. You know, so I come and I, I, I love to approach my platforms, letting the audience know what you're going to get and what you don't have to worry about over here. Because over here, family is important. Over here, we know what the enemy's assignment is. Over here, we value covenants that we enter into because that threefold covenant, okay, is important. And anytime you involve God in your relationships and your marriages and your covenants, it is something that you are not supposed to take lightly. And it is not something that you should be willing to throw away. I find that now in today's society, the very relationship, the very spouse, the very marriage that you prayed for God to bless you with, that you begged God to, you know, to make it work and to get you to the altar and to do all of these wonderful things in your life. And he came through, he honored his end of the deal. Now you're blessed with the wife. Now you're blessed with the marriage. Now you're blessed with the husband. And now you're just willing to throw it away. Now you're willing to walk out on it, you know, with your head held high, not taking ownership of the baggage that you brought to help break down and break up the relationship. That is not what we do over here. We want to take a good look inside Take a good hard look at the things that we've done, you know, to assist whatever season our relationship is in and then go to God in prayer and ask God to minister to our spirit and convict our heart so that we can turn around from what is wrong or what is displeasing, not only to God, but in the marriage and have the godly kingdom marriage and relationship that God would want for you, for me and for the rest of us. Understand? All right. So I'm going to get my glasses on, guys. I'm super excited. I'm so happy to be here with you. Again, if you're just now tuning in, my name is Angela Potareal. I am uh, the diva, the diva that is spoken of in the title. I'm a relationship concierge, but I come on this platform um, talking about marriages and relationships and reading the letters that I get from a biblical approach. All right. Amen. So let's just get into it. I want to go ahead and get into this young sister's letter and let's talk about it. Okay. So the young sister wrote in and she says, I regret getting married. Okay. Do y'all hear that? Okay. Believers, do y'all hear that? I regret getting married. And you know, that could be a sermon all in itself. You have so many people out here uh, that feel the same way she do. They regret getting married and it shows in their day-to-day -day activities and how they conduct themselves in their marriages and how they treat their spouses, all right? Um, having a little bit of problems with my glasses. I don't know why they are crooked, but just bear with me. Again, back to the letter, I regret getting married is the caption that this young sister wrote in and that's her title, not mine. My husband and I have been married for four months. I am regretting it strongly. I am depressed and incredibly unsatisfied. For context, we dated for three years before getting married. We did have sex, the S word. I'm not gonna say that word again. We did have intimate relations, tried to stop, had a hard time setting boundaries. In the first year of dating, he got tender, but made an excuse for it. I decided to continue. We almost broke up in our second year of dating, but put in a lot of hard work and now we are married. 
now that we are married, things are just horrible. It is not at all what the church hypes it up to be. The main problem is our intimacy levels do not match. I have had to switch up the words that were used, you know, because, you know, I'm respecting the platform that I'm on and I, I don't want to disrespect uh, my audience. The problem is, once again, the main problem is our intimacy level do not match. He does not desire me that way. He doesn't want me intimately. No matter if I wear the um, the lingerie or initiate the process, he just does not want me. I'm trying to do everything for him so that he might want me, but it isn't working. He's gotten his hormones tested and I'm 99% sure he isn't cheating or he's not into pornography. However, I'm struggling so much. I'm wondering what it would have been like if we lived together before marriage. I honestly don't think we would still be together. At this stage, I can't see a way out. I am fantasizing about the idea of a man wanting me. If this is my future, I don't want it. Oh my God, body of Christ. Now you see how serious this is. This is things that people are going through and are ashamed to talk about. These are very real issues that fellow believers sometimes go through. And you know, being far from me to pass judgment, you know, I'm not passing judgment, but I do want to talk about what this young bride, okay, is experiencing her feelings and, you know, try to encourage along the way. So good sister, you know where to find me. So I know that you're watching and you're listening. I want to let you know, first and foremost, you're not the first woman to go through this and you will not be the last. Let me just stop right there and tell you that. Lean in a little closer so I can assure you of this. You are not the first wife or woman to go through this and you will not be the last. I promise you that you're not, you're not alone. Now, it is troubling that what you're experiencing right, right now so early in your marriage is making you feel that you're, you're regretting getting married. And that's so unfortunate. The things that you are experiencing in your marriage is contributing to how you're feeling. And just know that this too shall pass. But what you do in the meantime, while all of this is going on in your marriage, it matters what you do and how you handle this it matters and it says a lot about how much you trust your heavenly father and the word of God to get you through this, okay? I started out, even before I started uh, reading the letter, I reminded the audience that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Remember that? One of the things that I find interesting is he has killed the intimacy, the desire in your marriage, which is a, an, in, which is, I can't talk. Let me start over. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Are you following me? Okay. What I find interesting is that the enemy has killed, okay, the intimacy and the desire to fellowship in the bedroom with you and your husband. He went for the jugular with you guys. He did. Because the enemy knows that if he could attack that area of a young marriage, of two young, vibrant people, okay, that he has sown a seed and that he is more than likely sure to get a harvest because intimacy is as a crucial part of your marriage. I do not want to underestimate it. I don't want to water it down. I don't want you to take it lightly. This is very much an, is an essential component of your marriage. And the enemy has come in and attacked you so early, so young in this area of your relationship. So what I need you to do first and foremost, I need you to be committed to your prayer life, okay? because it is going to take our heavenly father to step in and minister to the both of you so that he can direct your steps and order your steps and get you on the right path. 
okay? This isn't something that you cannot conquer. This is not something that you cannot beat. This is something that the enemy has come in and he is attacking you in this area in an effort to dismantle your marriage and have you walk away, honey. This isn't something you need to throw up your hands and give and, and just give up. No, you don't give up. You give it to God. Amen. You don't give up. You give it to God. Okay. Um, what I would encourage you to do is get real dil um, diligent on your prayer life. And I mean, I want you to talk to God, you know, with the time and the effort that you do in talking about your situation. Start talking about this crisis that you are going through and experiencing in your marriage. Start talking about it with God. Start Start laying your problems and your burdens on the altar because if anybody can help you and minister to the both of you, it is your heavenly father. Okay. First and foremost, prayer. Then I would encourage you to start seeking out professionals to deal with what is blocking the desire for the two of you to fellowship and connect on an intimate level. Anytime there's intimacy on in the marriage, this is uh, this is this is sacred, okay? Because you are in a covenant. You are in a blood covenant. The covenant involves three different people. You, your husband, and God, with God not being a person, but for lack of a better word, I said people. Three of you, you, your husband, and God. So with the three of you in this covenant, I know that if you turn your attention to God and lay this this, this this issue before God that he will again begin to direct your steps on this path so that you and your husband can begin to fellowship with one another. Because if you keep on going in the direction that you are going with your husband not being interested in it and you are just putting forth a lot of effort to try and get him interested in it and you are not achieving any type of results, that is a recipe for disaster and adultery. That's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants the both of you to be so frustrated in your own lane that you go outside of your marriage seeking that fellowshipping that intimate fellowshipping with other people versus within the within the covenant. You see, that is his goal. His goal is to get the both of you so early involved into adultery that your marriage would be a lost cause. And you know that the Bible speaks against adulterers. God judges adulterers. So don't be guilty of giving up and walking away from your marriage because you notice that the enemy has taken away your husband's de desire for intimacy. I would encourage professional help as far as going to a doctor to find out what it could be and a therapist, a psychologist or a psychiatrist to find out if there is a mental block there could be something serious going on. And you never want to underestimate what type of internal issues or problems or barriers could be um, going on with your husband. And now it's a barrier for the two of you to be able to fellowship in a godly way in the bedroom. So definitely seek out some professional counseling. The two of you need to get into some therapy so you can talk it through. And if there's any type of blockage or barriers that your husband is experiencing and may not be able to talk about because you have aligned yourself with the word of God and you are taking a biblical approach to the problem in your marriage, God will come in and do that thing. Okay. But you need to make sure that you check all the boxes when it comes to whatever the issue may be. Now let's get back to the letter and some of the things you said in it. You said that things are horrible between you and I can understand your position. I definitely want you to know, I understand because you're a woman and you want to connect with your husband um, in that way. And, and it's very important to have that affirmation, to have that love expressed physically between the two of you. But if he's not in the mood and he's showing no interest, he is setting you up for disaster as well as himself. And we need to get to the bottom of it. But, and it says, you said, and that this part breaks my heart. You said that men Marriage is not at all what the church hypes it up to be. Well, I don't want to discredit you. I don't know what hype you've been hearing, but I need you to know 
that breaking your marital vows and stepping outside of it and committing adultery ain't all the hype that that possesses to be either, that the world paints that to be. It's not all sunshines and cotton candy when you start breaking your covenants and breaking your vows and dishonoring and disgracing your covenant. You made an oath to God for better or for worse, and now you are experiencing something that is testing your faith. You have to stand firm on the word of God and whatever the church hype you said that your marriage is not living up to, let me assure you, my fellow believer and sister in Christ, neither will the hype be lived up to with committing ad adultery and breaking those vows. That's not going to live up to the hype either. You're not going to find happiness. You may find, you may find a few moments of whatever. But the long-standing consequences and results and the damage it could potentially do to your relationship with your Heavenly Father is not worth it. But getting back to the letter, let's address some, some parts of it. You said that you're wondering uh, what it would have been like had the two of you shacked up before you're married. Now, that's just the enemy speaking to you. And that's just you trying to look back and say, you know, trying to think of what you could have done differently that would have prevented the issues that you're facing today. And again, this is the enemy's attack on your on your on your uh, on your marriage and on, in, on your perspective, because now you're thinking that going outside of the will of God to achieve the the relationship that you want would have gotten you the results that you want. And that is what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you to think that if I disobey God, if I step outside the will of God, if I break, you know, I go against biblical principles to get what I want, then I'm going to achieve the godly results that I want. It does not work that way. There there are always consequences associated with stepping outside of the will of God or intentionally doing wrong. Intentional, and, and see how the enemy has a hold on you and your thinking right now? That is not what we want. We need not to lean on to our own understanding, but to lean on the word of God. I need you to get in that word. I need you to go to your pastor. I need you to start a prayer life that you have never had before. I need you to start leaning on God to get you through this thing and get you out of it. Because let me tell you something. The enemy will not be attacking you so hard and so heavy and so early on. You only been married for four months, my sweet sister, four months. And the enemy has came in like a flood trying to destroy everything that you've worked for. Now, getting back to your letter, you did mention something in the letter that let me know that you ignored some things while you were dating that could have been indicators that your husband and you were not quite ready to take this step. You said that uh, you found him on Tinder when you were dating. And now, if you guys were supposed to be exclusive, that's a no-no. That was a sign. Now, what you were supposed to have done with that information, what type of conversations you needed to have, it's too late to talk about that. But I can tell you that if you discovered that he was on Tinder or dating apps while the two of you were dating and you were supposed to be exclusive or in a committed relationship, that was something that you should have addressed at that time because that was leading to a bigger problem. And you say that you're sure that the issues with him are not related to cheating or pornography. Praise God. Thank God. I, I, I hope that you're right. I hope that you're not blind. And I hope that you're right. You know, only you know that. But I need you to understand that if you don't get a hold of this problem now, it will be something that will penetrate, you know, your, your covenant and it will be an issue for you. But for those of you who are just tuning in, let's just go ahead and reread the letter and recap it. We have a young sister, very young in age, um, just got married. Her and her husband had only been married for four months. And let me tell you, just like the enemy, anything that God has a greater purpose and plan for, the enemy comes in to what? Kill, steal, and destroy. And let me tell you, we need to lift this couple up in prayer because he has really come in like a flood for this young couple. And this young bride, this young wife is really heartbroken and she's seeking answers. And she is saying that marriage is not living up to the height that the church has made it out to be. And my heart breaks for her because she has trusted in the image, you know, in the, per in the perception that the body of Christ has painted up for marriage. And it still can be that for her. It's
It's just that right now her filter is clouded because of the distractions that the enemy has, you know, um, put in their path. But I'm going to just reread the letter on our way out. OK. OK, so to recaption the letter and these are her words. I regret getting married. Me and my husband have been married for four months and I am regretting it so strongly. I am depressed and I am incredibly unsatisfied. For context, we dated three years before getting married. We did have intercourse. We tried to stop, had a hard time setting boundaries. In the first year of dating, he got on Tinder. That's a dating app, but made excuses for it. I decided to continue. We almost broke up in our second year of dating, but put in a lot of hard work and now we are married. Now that we are married, it is just horrible. It is not at all what the church hypes it up to be. The main problem is sexually, we do not match. He does not desire me intimately. He does not want me intimately. No matter if I wear lingerie or try to initiate, he just does not want me. I'm trying to do everything for him so that he might want me, but it isn't working. He's gotten his hormones tested and I'm 99% sure he isn't cheating or he's not into pornography. However, I'm struggling so much. I'm wondering what it would have been like if we'd lived together before marriage. I honestly don't think we would still be together. At this stage, I can't see a way out. I'm fantasizing about the idea of a man wanting me. If this is my future, I don't want it. So that is what we are dealing with this young wife. I, you know what? My heart goes out to you. Um, this is an un, uh, unfortunate set of circumstances. But again, like I said, when we started out the show, you are not the first person, woman or wife to go through this. Some people, you know, are in their marriages for years and something happens that breaks that um intimacy connection and then they are living as roommates because there's no more intimacy in the relationship but because this is so early you are four months into your covenant let me be the source of encouragement that you need to fall on your knees and take it to god you fall on your knees you take it to god and you be determined that the enemy cannot have your marriage he cannot have your husband he cannot have you and you will not lay down your biblical principles to satisfy your flesh. Your flesh needs to be satisfied within your marriage. And you need to be committed to that. Be committed to seeing it through. Be committed to waiting on God to see you through this process, to deliver the answers and to minister to the both of you. Be proactive with seeking out professional help. This may require professional help. And there is no shame in that. There is no shame in being mature enough to get the help that you need to get the results that you want and, and you know that God would want for your marriage because there is a serious breakdown in the most one of the most crucial components of your covenant, which is your bedroom. And we do not want to give the enemy authority over your marriage and your um, fellowship and in the bedroom. So I need you to get a handle on it. I, I want you to shake off the encouragement Pray that God encourages your spirit and ministers to your spirit and does the same for your husband. I pray the desire, you know, enters back into the both of you and that you will have a yearning for one another, that you will crave to fellowship with one another and that it will be relentless, you know, fellowshipping with one another and that the two of you will turn your affection back to one another. I pray God's goodness over your marriage. I pray God's goodness over your life. I pray that the two of you will connect in the way that's so godly and so abundant that it will be something that will blow your minds. I pray the windows of heaven open up and delivers a blessing over your bedroom and fellowshipping that you will not have room enough to receive. I pray that the both of you look at each other with a fresh set of eyes and that the attraction and that the desire for one another is rekindled and you can continue in your covenant. That is what I pray for the both of you. So I hope you have enjoyed this segment of Diva Speaks Relationships Ministry. My name is Angela Potterreal. Have a wonderful day.